All right, hello, and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel, and today I want to be hopefully spreading a little bit of positivity and a little bit of hope surrounding Bitcoin as a possible exit to the system. And I'm going to be using Nigeria as the main example. Nigeria have had a CBDC, a central bank digital currency, for over a year, and less than half a percent of Nigerians are using it. The vast majority of Nigerians have just entirely refused the central bank digital currency. They don't actually want the CBDC and instead they're using Bitcoin. So I'm going to show you this now. The Central Bank of Nigeria tried to tighten the thumbscrews. They tried to apply the pressure to the Nigerian people and they said, look, we're not going to let you withdraw more than $225 per week in cash. And this is an attempt to pressure them and to force them into the use of CBDCs. However, when you look at the statistics, this is going back to January of 2022. Nigerians had a almost 20%, you can see that here, 19.4% adoption rate for Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Fast forward to today, and the estimates range between 20 and 35% of the adult Nigerian population owning Bitcoin or crypto and completely refusing the CBDC. The CBDC has been a massive failure. What this shows is that there is hope for humanity. There is a chance of separating money from state. And if enough people decide to not go along with the tyranny that is the CBDCs, if enough people decide they would rather use Bitcoin and transact peer to peer, then there is no stopping this. And to prove there's no stopping this, Nigeria, after this massive failure, is now set to legalize Bitcoin. And this is kind of silly, and I'm gonna show you why, but it just goes to show that if enough people say no, and if enough people exit the system, we will really have a hope. We really do have a chance at resisting tyranny. The chairman of Nigeria's House of Representatives Committee on Capital Market and Institutions has disclosed the chamber will soon pass a law that will allow digital currencies. And so click in this link, you hop in here and you can see that there's the proposed cryptocurrency law to define the central bank of Nigeria's roles and responsibilities. So scrolling down here, I just want to point one thing out that it says here, they have disclosed that the chamber will soon pass a law to allow digital currencies in Nigeria. Now, the reason this is hilarious is they're, they're gonna pass this law to allow digital currencies. What difference does that law make? Whether they choose to embrace this or not, whether they choose to make this thing illegal or legal, makes absolutely no difference because Nigerians have spoken. Already, over a third of the population has just decided, no thank you, I don't want your CBDC, I'm just gonna transact peer to peer with Bitcoin. So the idea that, oh, okay, we're gonna allow this, is really quite hilarious. They can say they're going to allow it, but whether they allow it or not, nobody can stop Bitcoin because Bitcoin is a permissionless peer-to-peer -peer system. You do not need permission. You do not need a bank. You do not need any ID. You do not need any form of credibility or permission. You, anybody can use the Bitcoin network. You don't even need the internet. Remember, you can send Bitcoin via text message, just like this. No internet, no smartphone required. You can simply SMS Bitcoin over a lightning node, just like this. And it's as simple as that. That's all you need to transact with Bitcoin. So good luck making that illegal. Good luck making that permissioned so that you need to have some form of documentation, some form of ID, some form of acceptance from somebody higher up. You cannot stop this thing. This really is humanity's one hope at exiting the system. You can see here that the further people crack down on cryptocurrencies, the further individuals are pushed into transacting peer-to-peer. -peer. The more stringent the outlaw, the more people just decide to exit the system. And it's not just Nigeria. Other places like India, which has the third highest Bitcoin adoption in the world, receiving whopping amounts of money worth of Bitcoin and crypto last year. The pattern is that these sorts of countries that do not have banked people, they have a vast population of unbanked individuals. Many people in these sorts of areas cannot get a bank. They don't have the sufficient documentation. They don't have sufficient permission to use a bank. Bitcoin is banking the unbanked. Bitcoin does not require any documents. Bitcoin doesn't care who you are. Anyone and everyone is free to be included in the Bitcoin protocol. El Salvador, most famous for making Bitcoin legal tender, being a world leader, the first country to do so, has been thriving. Shortly after El Salvador adopted the Bitcoin standard, the IMF started to urge El Salvador to remove Bitcoin as legal tender. You have to ask yourself, why does the International Monetary Fund not want a Bitcoin standard in places like El Salvador? And of course, the answer is they would much prefer to loan El Salvador and other nations like El Salvador money that they know they cannot afford to pay back. 
thus placing these sorts of nations in the IMF's pocket and therefore having dominion and control over these nations. These types of three-letter organizations operate like mafia or cartel. They want to indebt and enslave other nations by giving them loans they know they can't afford to pay back and thus increasing their global control and domination. Bitcoin is not just hope, it is a chance at freedom. Bitcoin enables nations to exit this system, it enables them to have their own money that is separate from state, it enables them to say no to the debt of the IMF and other similar organizations. It also, over time, so long as it can continue to be adopted, will appreciate in price. And of course, the price appreciation means the country has a chance at freeing itself from the debt entirely. It's possible that we're also going to see Mexico come and make Bitcoin legal tender. Mexico have been in deep conversations for some length of time with El Salvador on discussing the importance of Mexico adopting Bitcoin as legal tender. Mexico is indeed taking steps towards introducing Bitcoin as legal tender. Once this snowball starts to build momentum, once it starts to gain traction, there is going to be no stopping this thing. I've shown this before, I'll show it again because it's important. The Bank for International Settlement, that is the central bank boss, the central bank to central banks, now allows banks to use permissionless blockchains and hold 2% of their tier 1 capital in Bitcoin. Now it's important to point out tier 1 capital is the same type of capital that is allocated to gold. 63 central banks representing countries that account for 95% of the world's entire GDP are now able to hold Bitcoin. What we are seeing is Bitcoin forcing the hands of the elite. They cannot stop this thing, they can ban it, but they still cannot stop it. Nigeria has demonstrated this over and over again. China has demonstrated this over and over again. We are going to see a movement towards global adoption. If these banks do not get involved and do not embrace this technology, they're going to be left behind. Thus, I conclude that Bitcoin is humanity's one hope at freedom. Bitcoin is humanity's one chance of separating money and state. I hope to see this continue to be adopted. I hope that you could pass this information on to your friends, orange pill some people over the Christmas holiday, over the festive period. Do your bit for the community. Do your bit to engage with no coiners. Do your bit to show people that we have a chance if we bind together as humanity and we really could potentially shut down these CBDCs just like Nigeria has.